from the book Entangled Minds by Dean Radin, PhD. The quantum reality that we all live in is elaborated on in fascinating ways that makes the impossible seem very possible. As Einstein said, the quantum reality is spooky action at a distance and revolves around things that are beyond ordinary conscious awareness. When you start to break down everything at a quantum level past atoms, photons, and electrons, things begin to get really weird really fast. Electrons are basically the glue that holds everything around us together and also gives off an illusion of things being solid. It's within this invisible quantum reality that a defiance against both common sense and our preconceived notions originates. In truth, objects are not as separate as they seem, and the further you go into the quantum, the further and further separateness dissolves. Spooky action at a distance, entanglement, or any such notion in quantum mechanics suggests that separation is an illusion. The quantum entanglement of minds theory suggests that a much deeper reality exists that normal humans are blind to on pretty much every level. And this deeper reality is so alien to our conscious awareness that just momentarily experiencing it would most likely drive someone completely insane. And recent science concludes that microscopic entanglements scale all the way up to the macroscopic world. And in such an interconnected universe, is it possible that this entanglement applies to the human mind? Well, in the quantum reality, common sense assumptions must be thrown out the window because the impossible all of a sudden becomes possible. Quantum entangled minds leaves open a lot of possibilities that science has scorned in the past, like extrasensory experiences or even psychic phenomena, known as psi, to people who actually study it seriously. But even these esoteric ideas are just a drop in the bucket concerning possibilities. After all, if separation is a persistent illusion but still an illusion, then there is no separation between your mind and the seemingly limitless expanse of quantum reality through all the multiverse. Suddenly things labeled paranormal or supernatural can be thrown into categories under physics. However, Despite the bizarreness of our quantum reality, it doesn't mean that we should ever lose touch with the world in a practical sense. Scientific theories are always changing, and the last thing that anyone should ever do is turn it into subjective dogma, or even worse yet, push it onto others dogmatically. It's essential to stay grounded and accept that our reality is authentic to our perceptions, and for the most part, we are within the confines of its natural law. One of the main reasons why the heavy hitters don't like to talk about this kind of subject is because of the sheer amount of delusions of grandeur that it can cause. The most important things to embody concerning quantum theories is open-mindedness while at the same time questioning everything. As one of the most brilliant people who ever lived once said, the sign of an intelligent mind is to think about ideas without accepting them or denying them. So concerning entangled minds theory and psi experiments and theories, belief is a limitation best left sidelined. Both non-belief and belief get in the way of objective perception. Well, at least uh, as objective as humans can get, which actually isn't as much as one would think, but I'm sure you smell what I'm cooking. The more humanity discovers, the more there is that reveals itself that we have to learn. The totality of human knowledge is analogous to a grain of sand compared to all the sand on the entire planet. We are ignorant infants on a sea of infinity. And you know, let's be honest, psychic events have a checkered and questionable past, to say the least. Real events are subjective and elusive. Many things experienced in such a way cannot be explained to someone else because they have to be experienced to be understood. Skeptics come from a reality tunnel where they will only see evidence that goes along with their confirmation bias. But that sword cuts both ways, so it's best just to flow, as they say in Taoism. 
Psi is a term used to label all the different categories of psychic phenomena. There is also conscious Psi and unconscious Psi. To analyze claims of Psi, scientists like Dean Radine isolate the subject of the experiment and measure them against random things, which can range from dice to radioactive decay, among many other types of experimentations. The key is the subject has to be tested against things that can't be predicted in any way. This is one of the main types of experiments to gauge and experiment with extrasensory experiences, but there are literally thousands of variations concerning investigations into Psy, and many pitfalls have been discovered as well as many ways to get false positives. Examples of experiments with rigorous positives are distant mental influence, distant perception, and empathic accuracy. Some of the more classical psi phenomena are not as consistent, but still on the table. One of the main experiments that have stood the test of time is the ESP card test made widespread by J.B. Ryan's Parapsychology Laboratory that has consistently produced results in a controlled environment. Skeptics have thrown everything against the wall to discredit Ryan's work, but each supposed debunking has proven untrue through unbiased analysis. The results are undeniably backed up by irrefutable evidence. And there have been tons more of these psi experiments in recent decades, with science having to take it more seriously in recent times thanks to quantum mechanics. These scientific mavericks willing to journey into taboo topics have revealed that while psi phenomena cannot fully be contained within the scientific method, there is enough evidence to prove that there is something worth looking into. The key here is that Psy experiments are repeatable and able to get consistent results, which is a fundamental or even a foundation of the scientific method. They are just not easily repeatable, similar to how professional athletes do not give the same performance every time, and exterior sources influence that performance as well. Injury or exhaustion, countless variables can lead to poor performance on the test subject as well. However, the experiments are repeatable and do conclude with consistent results to give more than enough evidence for the reality of Psy. Quantum entanglement states that all minds are connected to all things in existence within our quantum reality. The matter on the other side of the universe is the same matter that makes up your brain and reacts as if there's no separation at all. I could go into the whole direct perception versus objective reality rabbit hole in the quantum reality, but that might need its own focus at a later date because it suggests objective reality doesn't exist at all, and perception affects matter itself, such as in the famous double slit experiment, which also throws common sense reality out the window and opens up mind-boggling possibilities. After all, if matter acts differently while being observed, what do you think that suggests about our day-to-day -day lives? So we've briefly gone over conscious psi, but what about unconscious psi? The subconscious roughly controls 95% of our lives, and with such a vast influence on everything from who we are to what we like, it seems like the unconscious psi should be far stronger than the conscious psi, right? The unconscious aspect of psi is where gut feelings, premonitions, and instinctual automatic reactions originate. There have been many studies on the three aspects of the nervous system, the automatic nervous system, the central nervous system, and the enteric nervous system. Many of these studies revolve around DMILS, which stands for Direct Mental Interactions with Living Systems. These experiments revolve around unconscious fluctuations in skin conductance. If someone is sending thoughts the way of the subject or looking at them through hidden cameras with various intents, before and during and after, the person is not aware of their fluctuations in skin conductance because it's produced unconsciously. And there are many other variations of this test too. And the results always conclude that unseen forces can unconsciously influence a person's sphere of awareness. Remote staring studies have produced similar data. And uh, the existence of a, an anomaly that can... Uh, transport distant intentions cannot be ruled out while still being far from understood in any objective way. So just how the human mind somehow can influence matter in this way is an anomaly still. 
and doesn't look like it's not going to be anytime soon. So I guess the evil eye might be kind of a real thing? But how can thinking about another person at a distance influence their automatic nervous system? Like what the hell, right? That doesn't make any sense. There really is no reasonable scientific answer. There are a lot of stories out there of someone thinking about, like, I'm sure you have one yourself, or heard of one, I mean, um, of somebody calling on the phone and you were just thinking about the moments prior, or somebody calls and you just somehow know who it is. I mean, it's pretty cliche, but the data suggests that there is something to that. And there are many more unconscious size studies I could go into, but I think you get the point and I want to keep this video short. So in the quantum reality, could it really be possible that all of our minds are connected in some way? Quantum entangled minds theory suggests that there is a mind to matter connection. And the closer that you look at the universe, the more it all resembles a sort of mind in a way. Do you think that thoughts affect the world? Do our entangled minds affect one another directly? There is little doubt that there is something super weird and unexplainable going on, at least uh, to our current level of understanding. I mean, can the goldfish genuinely comprehend what's outside of its fish tank glass? I don't know what I don't know. Tell me what you think in the comments.